Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, I just thought I would share with you my last haul from Book Depository. It is three books, and frankly, at this point, it is three books that I don't recall ordering because I placed this order at the beginning of April when I heard that Book Depository was shutting down. And so if you don't know, Book Depository was a really great resource uh, that essentially shipped books free to anywhere in the world from the UK. And so this was a really great resource if you were someone who was a big fan of UK releases, uh, but also in general, if you like a UK cover more than a US cover, it just was easy to use, it was very affordable, and the shipping was free to essentially everywhere. It was a part of Amazon, so I know a lot of people feel pretty controversially about having used it, uh, but it is essentially being shut down by Amazon, I think. And so I am not going to grieve this as much as I know a lot of people in other countries are that really had to utilize uh, Book Depository more fully than I have, but I did really enjoy a lot of UK books and a lot of UK covers. And so the alternative that I have found and that I have ordered from before and I've been fairly pleased with has been Blackwell's. One thing I will say about Blackwell's is that to my knowledge and what's always been my perception uh, is that they are a bit more expensive than Book Depository. So uh, do keep that in mind if you wanna utilize Blackwell's. I was pretty happy with their shipping time and I feel like things came relatively quickly and they came in good shape. And essentially that is all I ask when something is coming from a different country. But I got all three of these books today. It's been what feels like a really long time since I've placed an order from Book Depository anyway, but I really wanted to do it because I knew they were closing down. And so let's go on and get into this because uh, it's been a long day and it feels like it would be a great time to open up some books. I am in what I'm going to call a reading slump. Essentially, I have not read for over a week. A good quarter of my brain, I'm gonna say, is on the fritz, which is the quarter of my brain that can focus on a book. Because honestly, my mind is just wandering. Another part of my brain, let's say another quarter of my brain, is focused entirely on uh, the newest release from NCT, Do Zhe Zhang, Perfume. That quarter of my brain is playing that song on a loop 24-7. Uh, and it's also trying to learn that choreography. And so I feel like I'm working with maybe 50% capacity at any given time. And we are staring down a few weeks that are going to be very busy. So this is also just kind of an announcement uh, that I think my posting schedule will be pretty erratic throughout the month of May. It's been pretty erratic here in April anyway. Uh, so it does feel like just a great day to open some books. I'm pretty open. I'm really excited to read something new. So hopefully this will inspire me to get out of my slump. The first book that we have, I believe these are all paperbacks just because that's what I personally prefer to read, though I am not the world's biggest fan of the UK paperback. They're a little bit tight for me. Okay, so the first one is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. And this is a book that has been on my radar ever since it came out a few years ago. I really don't know why I didn't pick it up at the time because this is talked about as a historical fantasy. I think part of me thought this was a straight up fantasy and that I just really was not gonna be able to follow it. For the past couple of years, I have not really been on my adult fantasy game. I have not really been reading a lot of adult fantasy, but this year I would say, I feel like I have primarily read fantasy and I feel like my favorite books of the year so far have been my fantasy reads. So I feel primed for this. This is a Chinese inspired historical fantasy that is also a retelling of Mulan. So I just don't think it gets any better than that. The second book in the series is also coming out soon. And so that's also part of why I have been waiting on it. I just thought, let's wait until we know the second one is on the horizon. I have no idea if this is meant to be a duology or a trilogy or how connected the second book is to this one at all. But I am personally really excited about this. But I got this to read while traveling because I have a couple of trips planned. And so I'm not gonna pick this one up tonight. I kind of am thinking about cheating though and going on and starting this. This is the one I feel like I was the most excited by in this haul, but we'll see. Let's see what this one is. This feels really, really thin. And it is a vintage classic, Augustus by John Williams. This is John Williams's uh, historical fiction that is all about the life of the Emperor Augustus. And I am picking this up basically because Alan from the Library of Alexandria 
was obsessed with this book at the beginning of the year, and I frankly had never heard of it. I am vaguely familiar with John Williams because he wrote Stoner, and that seems to be a pretty big perennial favorite for a lot of people. It has never once appealed to me because it seems like very stream of consciousness, very beatnik in many ways to me from the outside looking in. That may not be what it is at all, but he has just never appealed to me and specifically Stoner hasn't, but I had no idea that he wrote historical fiction. And I'm actually really shocked. I, for one, thought this would be 10 times longer than what it is. I really thought from the way people have been talking about it this year, this has really been making the rounds on booktube. It sounded like it was really long, so I wonder if the language is challenging. This year I am reading or rereading a lot of ancient classics uh, that I haven't read in a very long time, so that's kind of my theme for the year of 2023. And when I started this project back in January, I also was thinking about incorporating more modern literature that was reflecting on antiquity. And so specifically, I was really interested in historical fiction because last year, I absolutely adored the memoirs of Hadrian. I know this is also a big perennial favorite for a lot of people. And when I looked up Augustus, it was often compared to the memoirs of Hadrian, which I just thought was dreamy and wonderfully written. So I hope this is in that same league. I was really impressed by that. I'll let you in on a little secret. I always think that I dislike Augustus as an emperor, and it's not true. I actually really like Octavian. I like his early life. I think he's really, really interesting because he was quite chronically ill as a child, as a matter of fact. And so I always find historical figures who dealt with chronic illness, I find them very compelling because I just genuinely find it fascinating how they had to deal with that in a society that did not accept it very well. And so I've always been fascinated by Octavian, uh, but Augustus as an emperor, he's very, very interesting. He's most people's favorite and a lot went down during his reign. So I am really interested in reading this. I feel like this is going to go well in conversation, not only with the memoirs of Hadrian, uh, but also with I, Claudius. Has every book that I ordered been read? I just feel like I was on a trend here. I thought that this one wouldn't have any read, but it does. So this is Raven of the Inner Palace, which is a light novel. And please do not ask me to give you a good definition of that because truly, I don't know. I am brand new to this format. And so all I know about light novels is that they tend to be novels that were written in Japanese and they are kind of a cross between a manga and a regular novel in that there will be illustrations kind of peppered throughout the pages, but it is mostly text. And I had never heard of this. I've heard of many other light novels that have kind of taken the world by storm, online by storm, basically. And I have been on a kick recently, I'll just confess it. I have been on a kick where I have been reading Wattpad. Should I be embarrassed by that? Probably. I probably should. Uh, but when I haven't been able to read, I've actually been able to focus on Wattpad because nothing there makes any kind of sense. And so you really do have to suspend your disbelief. But I have often heard light novels compared to Wattpad fan fiction or Wattpad novels in general. And so I thought to myself a couple of weeks ago, I might as well read something that will count towards my Goodreads goal if I'm gonna be reading this stuff. And so I really wanted to try a light novel. I have essentially tried this on a whim because this seems to be pretty new and I haven't heard very much about it. And so I'm really excited by that. This is about uh, the Raven Consort. Some say she is an old woman while others claim she is young and beautiful. And the young emperor arrives at the door of the Raven Consort seeking magical assistance. So I'm sure a romance is gonna be here. I think that's kind of the large basis of a lot of light novels. I'm ready for it. In fact, if I'm honest, of the three, if I was to start any today, I think it would probably be this one because I truly do not have the attention span right now. I'm still reading Petrarch and I'm still currently filming a reading vlog around reading Petrarch. That has essentially been all that I can focus on because it is short, pithy poetry. And so I have been able to read one here and there and still know what was going on. I really did want to get more from Book Depository. I specifically wanted to look at different editions of classics uh, because that's kind of where I started my classics collecting journey was actually on Book Depository. But I didn't see much that appealed to me. 
And generally I'll say, I feel like a lot was sold out on their site by the time that I got around to actually placing my order. So I'm really happy with these. Why was the theme red? I don't know, but I'm kind of feeling it. But I am really excited about all three of these. I feel like they're all kind of connected though, like two historical fictions, but two fantasies. I think it's a very interesting mix and I'm really excited about all three of these. I can't wait to start these. Hopefully one of these will get me out of this slump that I feel like I'm going into. I would love to know down below if you have read any of these three, if you would recommend them, and if you also placed a last order with Book Depository, sadly enough. But uh, thank you to Book Depository for all you have done over the years, truly. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.